let's talk about iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy so in pregnancy most common anemia is physiological anemia and uh, the most common pathological anemia is iron deficiency anemia and the cutoff for uh, uh, anemia in pregnancy is less than 11 uh, hemoglobin uh, less than 11 gram percentage of hemoglobin uh, this cutoff is less than uh, in normal female because in normal female it is less than 13 gram but in case of uh, i am pregnant females it is less than 11 gram because pregnancy is uh, naturally a anemic stage why because there is a increased plasma concentration increased plasma in pregnancy so we talked about the definition first so this is how i prepare the recall chart so just write the points like uh, first the definition less than 11 gram or less than 33 hematocrit and uh, then we talk about the causes so iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy has five causes and the first is increased demand during pregnancy so in overall pregnancy female require 1000 milligram of iron normal female in that case require only 700 milligram but due to the presence of fetus also the female require more iron so this is the first cause increased demand second is as our country is a developing country so there is a deficit in diet also so second is deficit in diet third is hookworm hookworm infestation it is very common so we have a third cause as hookworm infestation and the fourth cause is multifetal pregnancy multifetal pregnancy and the last cause is due to reduced absorption now what is the iron requirement in different trimesters so in first trimester the iron requirement of female is 1 to 2 milligram per day in the second trimester it is 4 to 6 and in the third trimester it increases to 6 to 8 milligram per day so after talking about the definition and the causes we talk about the clinical feature so it's same as normal anemia so it is the female will present with fatigue weakness and uh, palpitations why palpitation because the anemia is high cardiac output stage so uh, there will be palpitation and the last is dizziness so we have four clinical feature weakness fatigue dizziness and palpitations so on examination means this is the clinical feature the patient will tell these symptoms and now what is the sign on examination we will observe two things pallor and the second is coelonychia coelonychia is our nail is uh, uh, convex the coelonychia if there is a coelonychia it is uh, spoon like spoon shaped uh, nail con concave from upward and let's talk about the risk factors or what are the complications if the female is have anemic in pregnancy so mother will have a uh, risk like in pregnancy during pregnancy she can chan have chances of heart failure so there could be chances of abortion heart failure uh, preterm labor and uh, preeclampsia also there can be chances of abruption during labor she can have two complications the first is a heart failure heart failure is common in all the three stages like in during pregnancy during labor and during puerperium in all the three cases anemic pregnant uh, mother can uh, have heart failure in the labor we have heart failure and uh, postpartum hemorrhage during puerperium so puerperium is a stage of uh, six months after the um, delivery so during uh, puerperium the first thing is complication that an anemic mother can have is heart failure second is uh, uterine sub involution so uterine will go in uh, uterus will go inside this is a complication lactational failure can happen and uh, impaired wound healing can occur in case of uh, anemic mother so in a fetus we have a six complication the three of them is uh, very similar like uh, intrauterine growth restrictions iugr baby low birth weight baby preterm baby and uh, the baby will have increased chances of infection okay the baby is also anemic this is the fifth one and the last is the baby will have impaired cognitive function or impaired brain development huh. now after definition causes uh, clinical feature on examination risk factors and the prevention the prevention is iron folic acid tablet uh, should be given the dosage is 60 milligram iron sulfate and the 0.5 milligram folic acid this is the tablet and the duration is uh, six months in pregnancy and six months after pregnancy we have to give iron folic acid tablet and how to give it uh, we have to remember two things like vitamin c increases iron absorption and uh, iron and calcium tablets are not given uh, in simultaneously at least two hours gap should be there in the iron and calcium tablets and tea and coffee also decreases iron absorption so it should not be taken just after having tea or coffee second prevention method is uh, deworming so worm infection is um, seen in pregnant mother so in second trimester all over the india or uh, there is a we give tab alvendazole 400 milligram to every pregnant female so in investigation we have many points but the two point is um, very important like uh, first we'll do complete blood count it is done for every pregnant female in the first trimester and on in the 28th week uh, so in complete blood count there will be decreased hemoglobin and uh, decreased hematocrit second is a serum ferritin it is most important 
less than 300 nanogram per milliliter so the then we will this is the threshold level for anemia in pregnancy and uh, if serum ferritin level is not very clear like it if it is in borderline then we will check total iron binding capacity and uh, transferrin saturation level so total iron binding capacity will increase as uh, there is a uh, very less iron so the iron binding site is very free so tibc will increase and transferrin saturation will decrease third investigation is peripheral smear in peripheral smear we will uh, see poikilocyte and isocytosis in microcytic so all the features of uh, iron deficiency anemia that we have read in pathology will be seen in the peripheral smear but the peripheral smear is uh, not a good marker because uh, because it takes a lot of time to uh, see uh, to see the effect in uh, peripheral smear uh, then we will check for the stool and the uh, why we will check for the stool for the uh, cyst and uh, for the worm infection to rule out in any kind of worm infection and then we will also check for uh, if if the reason is endemic to thalassemia we will also uh, check for the serum thalassemia so so the uh, thalassemia is also microcytic anemia so to differentiate between the thalassemia and iron deficiency anemia we will check for red cell distribution width so red cell distribution width increases in the iron deficiency anemia but it is less in the case of thalassemia so it is more than 13 in case of uh, uh, iron deficiency anemia we will check for uh, urine microscopy and uh, to rule out hematuria and uh, liver function test we will also do in the management of iron deficiency anemia we have two parts for the severe patient and for the mild patient for the severe patient if so if the hemoglobin percentage is less than 5 then we will do blood transfusion and but if the hemoglobin percentage is between 5 to 7 then we will check the period of gestation of the female if the period of gestation is more than 34 week means it is close to the liver then we will go for blood transfusion but if it is less than 34 week we will go for parenteral iron hemoglobin percentage between 7 to 11 is categorized under mild to moderate patient in this we check the period of gestation first so if the period of gestation is less than 34 week means the liver is late so we will give oral iron so we will give two tablets in prevention we were giving only one tablet per day here we are giving two tablet per day so after one month we will check the hemoglobin percentage of the female if it is increased by one gram percentage then we will continue the same treatment that is oral iron but if the hemoglobin one is not increased in that case we will check the compliance of the patient the patient taking iron uh, tablets has stool black in color so so we will check the stool of the uh, patient and uh, most of the patient is not uh, compliant to taking the iron tablets because of the following reasons like iron tablets cause gi irritation nausea vomiting and it is also not uh, it is also not good in test so um, metallic test so female don't like to take it so during prescribing the oral iron we will tell the patient all these things and we will also give some dietary advice that we have mentioned earlier like not take with tea and coffee increase vitamin c in your diet increase protein content in your diet okay so this kind of thing we will tell the patient earlier now in the moderate case if the period of gestation is greater than 34 week then we will give parenteral iron so we have four type of parenteral iron iron sucrose iron dextran iron sorbitol uh, ferric carboxymethylcellulose but the most of the time we use iron sucrose because the other th three are having some side effects so one ampule of iron sucrose contains 50 milligram of uh, iron so we give two ampule at a time means 100 milligram mixed in 100 ml of normal saline so we give 100 milligram of iron sucrose three times a week and maximum we can give at a time 200 milligram not more than that so this uh, iron sucrose do not have any side effects so we don't need to test the patient before giving it and uh, during labor management of the anemic pregnant mother is like uh, in to keep the patient in proper position and uh, give oxygen to the patient give analgesic to the patient for pain relief monitor the vitals of the patient so restrict per vaginal examination and you have to also restrict another kind of examination to avoid bleeding we will prefer instrumental delivery to save time and also to reduce bleeding and we will do amtsl acute management of third stage of liver this was all about iron deficiency anemia in pregnancy